Hi guys, Miss Pascal here. Yesterday we started learning about picture graphs and pictographs. Today we're going to keep learning about a new type of graph that is called a bar graph. And you guys have actually been using bar graphs since you guys were in kindergarten. So we're going to keep learning about bar graphs and we're going to start by watching a video together. So here we go. Where should we go on our next class trip? The zoo, the firehouse, or the apple orchard? I'm taking a survey and making a tally chart. What are surveys and tally charts? A survey is a list of questions used to collect information or opinions. Let's see. There are three dinosaurs here. Let's take a survey to find out which one our classmates like best. We can use a tally chart to record data or information. Let's see, Moby likes the Stegosaurus the best. You can draw one tally mark to stand for one vote. Five kids like the Triceratops. So I'll draw five tally marks in that row. One, two, three, four. The fifth mark is drawn across the other four. Well, when you group the tally marks by fives, you can count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. Sets of fives are easier to count. Hmm. Seven kids like the T-Rex. So after I draw five tally marks, I can add two more to make seven. Oh, right. I forgot to vote. My favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. I'll add a tally mark to that row. It's really easy to add to tally charts. Now I can count the votes and use the tally chart to make a bar graph. What is a bar graph? A bar graph is a way to organize and show data. You can write the categories on the bottom. The three dinosaurs are the categories. Then you can write the numbers on the side. The numbers in our bar graph show how many people voted for each dinosaur. Let's see, one student liked the Stegosaurus the best. So I fill in one square. Six people voted for the Triceratops. So I color in six squares. Seven people said the T-Rex was their favorite dinosaur. You can also put the categories on the left and the numbers on the bottom. You can display the same information in a different way so you can understand it better. How can you use bar graphs to understand information? Bar graphs help you answer questions. Which dinosaur did people in our class like the best? Right, the T-Rex is the most popular. Which dinosaur did people like the least? Hmm, the Stegosaurus got five fewer votes than the Triceratops. You can even use the bar graph to figure out the total number of students who voted. Just add the votes from each category. 14 kids voted in all. I'm almost done with the survey on where to go for our next class trip. So far, the zoo is the most popular. It has 16 votes. But I don't have your vote yet, Moby. Where do you want to go? The moon? I don't think the bus will get us there. All right, guys. So that was a quick video explaining a little bit about bar graphs and we're going to continue learning about bar graphs today. So what I want you to do is I want you to get out your book 
And I want you to open up to page 403 because we're going to be doing some problems together today. So go ahead and open up to page 403 in your workbook. And it should look like this. All right, give me one second. There we go. All right, so we're on page 703. I don't think I said that right. Page 703. Sorry about that. All right, and it should have these little flowers off to the side. So today, we're going to be learning that a bar graph uses bars of different lengths or heights to show data. And in grade two, you used a bar graph with a scale of one. So kind of like what Moby was showing you, the scale was one, two, three, four, five. Well, this year, we're going to be learning that a scaled bar graph can have a scale greater than one. And I'm going to just tell you exactly what that means. So let's look at example number one. Milo surveyed five grades to find the number of May birthdays. He recorded the data in a tally chart and displayed the data. Oh, he wants us to display the data in a vertical bar graph. <clears throat> so over here is his tally chart. He used tallies. So five people had a birthday in first grade in May. So I'm going to write a five over here. In second grade, there were 11. In third grade, there were three. In fourth grade, there were four. And in fifth grade, there were two. And I like to put these numbers off to the side to help me remember how many there are of each. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle. So they actually already drew the rectangles for you. And they drew your big rectangle on the outside. So there are different parts to this graph. Over here, these numbers, is that, that's called the scale. And you might remember that I told you in first grade and second grade math, you guys used a scale of one. So you might go zero, one, two, three. But this year, we're going to be using a scale that can skip count by numbers. So this one skips count by two. It's zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Over here, there are labels that describe the information. So on this side, that's the number of students. And on this side, that's their grade in school. They created a line because each line stands for two students. So at two, they drew a line. And at four, they drew a line. And these rectangles represent how many there were of each. So there were five first graders. So that bar graph goes up to five, which is in between four and six. Over here, there were 11 second graders. So 11 goes up in between 10 and 12. Now, we need to give the graph a title. So whenever we're thinking of a title, we need to think of what is this graph telling me? Well, this graph is telling me how many kids have May birthdays. So in this title, I want you to write down May birthdays. All right. Now, they did step two for us. They chose a scale. And the scale is a set of numbers that represents the data organized into equal intervals. That means on this side, I am counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, and so on. The last step was drawing the bars, which they have already done for you in blue. So on this next page, we're going to practice drawing a bar graph on our own. So go ahead and flip the page. And we're going to be on page 704. So go ahead and flip over to 704. We're going to do this page together. So data can also be displayed in a horizontal bar graph. And horizontal means side to side. They go from left to right. So we're going to be doing a bar graph that is horizontal, for example, number two. And it says, Desmond surveyed his friends about their favorite summer sports. Display the results in a horizontal bar graph. So number one, we need to draw and label. So they actually already did this part for you guys. They drew a rectangle. They labeled the side and the bottom to describe the information. 
and they gave the graph a title. So the title of their graph was Favorite Summer Sports. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a scale, and they also did this part for you. So they counted by twos. Zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Now, they separated it into six equal columns going up and down. Now, our third step is drawing the bars. So we need to make sure it matches our table up here. So first, let's write the frequency of each. So tennis, four people voted for tennis. So I want you to write down a four. Ten people voted for swimming. Seven, or actually five, six, seven, seven people voted for baseball, and six people voted for biking. Now, I want you to pause this video and to fill in your graph. Go ahead. Hopefully, guy, you guys filled in your graph a little bit better than I did. So let's go down and practice number one. Display the set of data from example two in a vertical bar graph. Okay, so we're gonna be using the same data as up here, but instead of horizontal left to right, we're gonna be doing it vertically. So tennis, there were four votes. So down here, I'm gonna fill a rectangle up to four. Now, it's important that when you draw the bars that they are not touching each other. So I'm going to draw a skinny rectangle up to four. And our swimming had ten votes. So I'm going to draw another rectangle up to ten. And you might notice that my bars are not touching each other. They're not touching each other down here. Now, our third is baseball with seven votes, so I'm going to draw a seven, but this one's a little tricky because seven is in between six and eight. So I'm not going to draw all the way up to the line, and I can't have it on this line for six, so I'm going to draw it in the middle. And my last step is going to be biking. So biking had six votes, so I'm going to draw a last rectangle up to six. All right, your graph should look like mine. So on this next page, we're going to be doing some graphing problems together where I'm going to ask you guys to pause, to do the activity or the question, and then to press play and to check it. So whenever I say pause, I want you to pause this video and you try it yourself first. So we are on page 705, and let's read the directions together. It says, display each set of data below in a bar graph. So, let's do the bar graph first. We see some blanks over here, okay? So, I'm going to take this data, and I'm going to make it into a vertical bar graph. That means up and down. And then, I'm going to answer these two questions. So, go ahead and pause the video. I want you to try and do number two on your own first. So go ahead and pause it. All right. If you are watching this part of the video, that means you have already answered number two. So let's check it together. The first thing that you should have done is thought of a title. So over here, we can see that they voted on their favorite birds to watch. So they've actually already thought of a title for us. So I'm going to write favorite birds to watch. And you might notice that there's another empty box down here. And I'm going to ask myself, what are cardinals, robins, and goldfinches? Well, those are all types of birds. So I'm going to write birds down here because that's my label for these three things. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to add my um, tally chart number. So I am going to be doing cardinals, which had eight. 